Welcome traders. Uh, we're going to get started here in the next um, 30 seconds or so. If you can, uh, if you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, if you just type a Y in the chat box so that I know we are good to go. Good stuff. Okay, that's 1 p.m. UK time. Uh, welcome to today's introduction to the E-mini and micro S&P contracts. In today's session, I'll be introducing you to the instrument's structure and advantages, along with highlighting some unique market mechanics that enhance the trading information for this product. I will also introduce you to my core strategy for trading these and demonstrate how you can consistently use my pre-market analysis to reap consistent returns. Uh, before we jump in, uh, just so that you're aware, um, I'm going to run through this presentation. If you have any questions, if you can just uh, make a note of them, and then at the end of the session, I'll open up a Q&A and I'll cover off any queries you may have. Okay, so uh, for those who are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. After I graduated from King's College London, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I ultimately left with some colleagues and went on to successfully coast, found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suites, executive search for technology businesses. So I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. Uh, so I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time in my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500, or more appropriately, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, uh, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down, giving back all my gains, and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. Uh, to say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I was not just my technical game in terms of developing a strategy that crucially suited my personality, extensively back and forward testing strategies, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you do become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading as being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you really lose the emotional investments and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus on the next hundred trades, because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed accounts service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill. My other passion project is leading trader edu education for a premier trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. At FX Career Swap, uh, we offer development and funding to retail trading talent. We don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development uh, through our structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. 
So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's, uh, let's jump into today's material. Uh, the E-mini or ES or the minis or the spoos is a futures contract that tracks the S&P 500 stock market index. It's traded on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange or the CME via their Globex electronic trading platform. Trading is 23 and a half hours a day, five days a week using the contract symbol ES. E-mini contracts are available on a wide range of US stock market indices, commodities and Forex. However, when traders refer to the E-mini or the E-minis or the SPOOs, they're generally referring to the most important one, the futures contract that tracks the S&P 500 stock market index. E-mini futures were originally launched in September 1997 to attract non-professional investors into trading index futures. Previously, the only game in town had been the large S&P contract, but it had become too expensive for the little guy to trade. So the CME created the E-mini contract which was one fifth the size of the large S&P futures contract and required only one fifth of the margin to trade. The mini became a huge success, not only with professional traders, but uh, sorry, not only with non-professional traders, but with professional traders too. The micro e-mini futures contract is the same as the regular S&P 500 e-mini contract in every respect, except importantly here, it's one tenth the size. That is, each one point move in the S&P 500 index is worth $5 per micro e-mini contract compared to $50 for the e-mini or ES. And obviously the margin to trade a micro contract is one tenth the size. So what are the benefits of the e-mini product? Well, it's equally easy to go long or short. You either buy or sell the current e-mini contracts and there is no uptick rule. It's 24 hours of trading, which makes the E-mini attractive to traders around the world. Overnight moves in related equity markets like the DAX or the FTSE can be played with one trading vehicle. The electronic trading platform means that your orders are entered instantaneously and when executed, you are notified instantaneously as well. Changing and cancelling orders is trivial. No phone calls required to brokers anymore. It's a level playing field. The Globex electronic trading platform means that large and small traders have equal access to the market and trades are executed in the order that they are received. And like pit traded futures of old, uh, the backroom games once those boys are over. It's got a tight bid and ask spread because there's so much volume is traded through the mini that difference between the bid and the ask price is only ever one tick or 0 0.25 index points, which is the minimum movement in the market. The large depth of market, again, because of the liquidity, means there's plenty of volume either side of the last traded price for large orders to be filled with minimum slippage. Uh, it's volatile, yes, but not unmanageable. The E-mini is active every day, which gives the trader plenty of opportunity to trade. Remember, a sleepy market is impossible to day trade, but the E-mini vol volatility is also manageable, except around major tier one uh, announcements or geopolitical uh, surprises or market shocks. The low brokerage rates, uh, broker commissions for trading e-minis uh, continue to fall. This excludes exchange clearing and regulatory fees. And when you factor those in, your round trip or in and out brokerage commission is very attractive. The low margin requirement to open a day trading uh, position with Tickmill, for example, you only require 1,000 US dollars to open a micro account. Remember, these are the absolute minimums uh, you should be trading with, uh, much more capital behind your position, ideally. Uh, lower tax rate than trading Forex or stock income from trading e-mini futures is taxed as a capital gain. So there's no trade by trade accounting. Um, another advantage of the tax treatment of the E-mini futures is that the tax reporting requirements are minimal. In particular, no, uh, like I say, no trade by trade accounting is required. Only the net profit for the full year is needed. Okay, so now we understand the instrument and the trading venue. I want to demonstrate some of the unique aspects uh, that the E-mini has as a derivative of the S&P 500. And it allows us to access some really unique information commonly referred to as market internals. Market internals are often compared to the instrument dashboard on the car, giving indication of performance and alerting the driver to any issues occurring under the hood. 
So let's take a look more closely at what market internals are and how we can incorporate them into a consistent trading strategy. First, volume. As unique features of trading, the exchange traded derivative as opposed to a contract for difference or Forex volume data. Uh, Forex volume is, is notoriously incomplete as there is no central exchange and the banks who dominate Forex trading don't share volume data in real time. However, we get a true reflection of actual volume, which is shared directly by the CME available to all market participants in real time. I use volume as a tool to confirm breakouts and opportunities to fade the market. Spikes in volume will often be accompanied by intraday profit taking. And we'll be looking at some examples after we walk through uh, each of the internals here. Uh, the second um, really important tool that I use is the NYSE, the New York Stock Exchange Tick Index. This gives us the relationships of, st of stocks ticking up versus ticking down. Tick is an extremely useful tool for intraday traders. For example, if there are 3,000 stocks trading on the New York Stock Exchange and 1,500 trade higher from their previous price and 500 trade lower from their last price, Tick will read plus 1,000. But you might ask, well, what about the other 1,000 stocks? Well, they would have been unchanged from their last quoted price. So when using the Tick, we are looking for extremes to enter or exit a trade. Tick readings of plus 1,000 or minus 1,000 are considered very strong, and we typically trade between 1,000 most of the time on the New York Stock Exchange. Tick readings with uh, plus or minus 400 indicate sharp, and we ignore them. On a range day, you can look to fade tick extremes. I apply a moving average, so I can, it makes it easier for, for me to see the distribution or trend of the tick. Uh, note that uh, extreme tick readings for the day are really important to pay attention to because when we get a high tick and a high in price at the exact, exact same time, this more often than not indicates the high of the day is probably in. When a high tick prints without a simultaneous high in price, we can continue to make new highs until a new high tick is reached. And obviously the reverse is true for uh, low ticks followed by new lows. The next tool I use is the advanced uh, decline line or AD line for short. It's the second most important of the internals. This indicator tells us the net sum of advancing stocks minus declining stocks. So there are roughly 3000 stocks listed on the New York Stock Exchange and 3000 on the NASDAQ. An AD line reading of uh, plus 1500 is very bullish and a reading of over 2000 is extremely bullish. On the flip side, readings of negative 1500 and below are very bearish and readings below 2000 are extremely bearish. These extreme readings are indicative of trending days where once the market, continue, once the market opens, it continues to trend all the way into the close. So we look to the AD line in conjunction with our final uh, market internal, the breadth ratio, to confirm these trend days. For example, a day with 2,500 advancing stocks and only 500 declining stocks would yield a net positive of 2,000, which is an extremely bullish reading, as I said. It would take a large catalyst to shift the market direction with a reading that's this bullish. If on the open, you continue to see the AD line moving plus 500, plus 700, plus 900, this is a sign of broad market strength. If, however, the market is moving higher, but the AD line is moving lower, this divergence could be a sign of a market turn or reversal. Last, but by no means least, the breadth volume ratio. This is composed of volume flowing into up stocks versus volume flowing into down stocks. The breadth ratio is expressed as up volume uh, divided by down volume. The reading is important in relation to where it has been, especially where we are now compared to where we opened the day. So for example, if at 10 a.m. we have 10 million shares moving up and 5 million shares moving down, the resulting breadth ratio is two to one positive. Twice as much volume is flowing into up stocks as down stocks. But if at 10.30 a.m. the market has sold off, but we still have a breadth ratio that's positive, either two to one or three to one, this is a signal that the markets are actually becoming stronger and it's time to look to buy a pullback, so looking for a long setup. So now we understand the uh, market internals and the unique insight they provide, 
I want to briefly walk you through uh, my trading strategy. Um, by understanding the market context in which we're trading, I'm looking to execute two types of trades. Firstly, a mean reversion trade in a ranging environment, and secondly, momentum trades in trending environments. All of these trades are underpinned by the market internals. Every day, prior to the market open, I plot pivotal support and resistance action areas that are derived from multi time frame uh, market auction theory and volume profile analysis. This allows me to av avoid engaging the market in areas of heavy rotation or chop. The support and resistance action areas have three purposes. They can act as entry levels in mean reversion setups. Uh, in directional or trend environments, the action areas act to confirm momentum entries. And then lastly, they are used for targets for trades. I also note additional key data from the prior day's action. These levels are often important to define the bias for the day, the previous volume point of control, the highest volume price from the previous day. Uh, this is where buyers and sellers perceive uh, the price to be fair value for the day. I confirm the current market context. This confirms the dominant side of the market. I look at the overnight trade, I look at the trend on a one to three day time scale, a one to three week time scale, and a one to three month time scale. But because there are times when neither side is dominant, and it's important to assess how the cash trading session develops, because you can only access the market internals after the New York Stock Exchange opens. So this is the market internals are only relevant for the cash trading session. I also highlight quantitative probability plays based on where the cash or regular trading hours session opens in relation to the prior days, either above, below, or within the range, based on these key levels and the probability of price testing these levels over an extended data set. This can prove useful for trade entry, exit, and management. Lastly, I note volatility or range analysis, as this helps to inform current market context. Is market balance in relation to current volatility? Uh, we equally, we can confirm the market out of balance, and this can inform the bias as we head into the cash trading session. It also helps to inform trade execution and trade management. So let's take a look at a few examples um, of how the combination of the action areas and market internals and data deliver an edge when trading the EMEA and the S&P. So this is an example of uh, pre-market analysis for the cash, uh, the cash trading session. You can see here um, that price trades, as we know, to, um, 23 and a half hours a day. Uh, but what we call this period, the overnight period, we refer to this as the Globex period. And uh, you can see that the internals are not present during the Globex session. So the internals, like I say, are only relevant for the cash trading session. Um, when the New York Stock Exchange opens at 2.30 UK time. So on this day, we came into the day, um, the primary high probability play I highlighted in my pre-market analysis was, um, was for a test and reversal from the initial resistance action area, as long as we had negative internals, uh, negative AD line and negative breadth. So the market opened up, we traded into the initial resistance zone, we had a negative tick distribution. So we were trading uh, below the zero line for uh, the tick. We were trading below the zero line uh, advanced decline line, and we were trading below the zero line uh, in breadth. So that immediately sets up an opportunity to short the market. And when we short the market from uh, the primary resistance, the area we're looking to test here is the Globex low or primary support. So in this instance, we're going to trade there uh, in profit for 18 and a half points. Next setup here, we came into the day. Um, we were actually, if you look here in the market context, we were bearish on the overnight session and uh, we were bearish, well, well, we were neutral to bearish on the one to three day perspective, but we were bullish on the longer time frames. And so what I highlighted here was that as the market opened, uh, in, in like, as I say, in bearish context in the near term, we saw strong buying volume straight out of the gate. And so we had the tick developing positively. We had breadth coming from below the zero line and developing positively as, as well, as well as the AD line, sorry, there, the breadth is here. And so as, as I discussed, once we get that signal from the internals, that gives us the go ahead then to look for long positions and the long trades 
uh, was through the primary resistance into secondary into secondary resistance, and that gave a 10 point, uh, 10 point trade to the upside. Next one here, uh, market context, um, bearish. Oops, that. one second, guys. Okay, so the market context, the overnight was bearish. Um, the near term, one to three day was bearish, obviously bullish on the longer term timeframes. So what we were looking at here was the potential to play a break of the primary support to the downside. And um, we just wanted to see how the internals opened up and we can see that they were weak. We had negative tick distribution. We had very weak um, AD line and breath deteriorating. So that gave us an opportunity to short into the uh, primary support for a continuation trade or trend trade. And when we actually got down to the secondary uh, support zone, there wasn't actually a signal at that stage from the market in terms of an exhaustion signal. So a new low in price with a new low or ticket stream reading. So that allows us to move our stops to entry on the original position. And then we traded into the secondary support zone. So um, the risk there using the continuation stop, I highlight uh, using market uh, volatility, what stop size you should, you should use. So in this instance, uh, for the continuation trades, it was seven and a half points. And that actually gave a trade there that, or profit potential of 28 points to the downside. So in this instance, again, another reversion play here as we traded into the uh, primary resistance. What were the internals telling us? Well, breadth was deteriorating, AD line was below zero and rolling over, and we had a negative tick distribution. So in this instance, we wait for the test of the primary support to set short positions. And we were bearish during the Globex session, neutral bias on the one to three day time frame. And so short it, you sell the uh, test of the primary re uh, resistance and target and move down into the primary support, giving a 16 point uh, profit target there. Another setup here, another um, reversion play for us. We were bearish on the bearish on the overnight session, bearish on the near term, and so what we were looking for was a test of the primary resistance with negative market internals. So what do we have? We have the AD line trading well below zero, breath below zero, and a negative tick distribution well below the zero line of the test, and so that gives us the signal uh, to get into that trade on the short side and um, market fell away, went through primary support, through pro and into the secondary support, and that trade, depending upon how you manage it, offered 30 to 40 uh, points of profit there. So that just gives you a, a, a brief outline of how I, um, how I address the market, how I consistently use the internals uh, for trade setups. What I'll do now is, uh, as an example in real time, is we'll jump into today's uh, charts and I'll walk you through uh, what I see the potential for as we head into today's cash session. Like I said, um, the, the, what I'm looking to do here is identify the current market context and I want, that, I want to then use the, ca the cash opening and seeing where the internals are to confirm the trade setup. So at the moment for me heading into today, I'll be looking for long positions uh, through 43, 48, 50. And what I want to see at the open is a positive breath, positive, uh, sorry, positive breath, po positive AD line, and a positive tick distribution to get long through that uh, 43, 48, 50. The initial upside target then is going to be 43, 58, 50. Uh, up to uh, 43, 62, 75. If we don't get any exhaustion signals, so as we trade into this area, if we're making that new high in price of the day and we don't have a ticket stream or a new high tick for the day, then that gives the signal to uh, one, take the risk off the table, stops to entry and hold the trade then to play for the secondary upside objective, which is 43.71. So that's the primary uh, trade I'll be looking at. That's the highest probability setup heading into today. The, on the downside, uh, and, and I'll just actually, this is a good example of yesterday. We came into yesterday, we were bullish on all time frames. However, I, and, and what I was looking to do yesterday is basically the same plan as today was to buy a break of that uh, 48, uh, sorry, 43, 48, 50. 
uh, for an upside. But I highlighted to the, uh, the guys that we had very weak internals at the open. And what I actually was looking for was that if we got through the primary and secondary support was to uh, put in a short position through 43.15, targeting a move down to 43.08. So yesterday, there was a seven point trade on offer um, using my pre-market analysis. So similarly today, I wouldn't be looking to get short this market unless we can take out 43.05 to the downside. And if we do get, if, if, if we take out that 43.05, like I say, I wanna see really weak internals um, to, as we got yesterday with the breath just rolling over negative um, AD line, negative tick distribution. So I'd be looking through 43.05, initially targeting a move down to uh, 42.98 to 42.96. And again, if we don't get an exhaustion signal, so we trade down into that area and we don't get a new low in, uh, a new low in price accompanied by a new low tick for the day, then we can hold that trade and look for a test of the 43.89 to 43.85.50. So that's how I'm setting up for the day uh, as we trade it, as, as waiting for the cash open. And, um, and that's the, the high probability play is gonna be the long, but if we start to roll over, it will be through 43.05 on very weak internals to, uh, to trade to the downside. So I'm not taking a huge amount of trades. There's, uh, there's, there's, on, on an average day, there's one or two setups I'm looking at, and I just wait then for the market internals to confirm those and uh, and I take the trade. So it's not uh, it's not that there are uh, there are, it's it's not a, a scalping strategy. This is more of a position type trading uh, strategy. And so it's very easy to uh, for, for new traders once you grasp the internals to uh, to apply this uh, to your own accounts. And uh, finally, then I would like to extend an offer. Uh, to join the Tickmill Futures and Options Strategy Group. This is where I deliver this pre-market analysis. It actually comes in the form of a short video each day that's, uh, that's delivered to the group, um, generally two to four minutes long, just highlighting the setups for the session ahead. And then I give updates during the session as to, uh, as to what the opportunities are and, uh, and share the, the trades that I'm running and managing all through this group. Uh, I also provide some institutional insights from uh, some of the big investment banks. So we have a, an idea of what's, what they're looking at, where their footprint in the market is, what their assessment of current trends and strength of trends. And so that's all shared through this group, uh, which like I say, is a private group. I also provide other insights as well, uh, share trades that I'm putting on in other, other futures markets as well. One of which, you, well, you can see up here at the top, the. Uh, VIX I've been running uh, very profitably over the past few sessions. So um, this, is, uh, this is the group where I share my analysis, the trading strategy, trading updates, and you are all, uh, you're all welcome to uh, take a trial of that for, uh, for the next two weeks. What I'll actually do is I'll put the uh, link here into uh, the chat. Let me just do that for you. Uh, boom, boom, boom. There we go. You can uh, you can request access through that link that I've just put in the chat. And uh, with that, I will open up a uh, brief Q and A. If anyone has any questions, you can either type them in the chat box, or I think we also have a Q and A box there. Yes, we do. Um, and uh, and I'll cover off any questions you might have. Equally, if you don't have any questions, um, just typing an N in the chat box is is useful so that I know. Uh, we can uh, we can potentially wrap this up here. Okay, so I can't see any questions coming through. Uh, so I'm going to uh, hope that I've done a reasonable job of explaining all that stuff to you, and uh, and you've been able to take it on board. There will be a recording of this um, posted through my uh, uh, LinkedIn. You can follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, also will message me if you do think of any questions afterwards. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this one up here then guys. Thanks very much for your time and I hope this helps.